Good morning. This week we'll be reading out Exodus 23 and Matthew 22, 27 through 40. Last week we skimmed over the Sixth Commandment, and I thought we should check out the rest of them. Today we're going to be starting with the First Commandment. We often think of the Ten Commandments as just a list of do's and don'ts. They are seldom seen as more than specific and very rigid rules. However, God also intended them to be used as guidelines. They can help Christians make decisions about things that appear to be outside the intention of the explicit command and therefore useful for every step and decision in their lives. As a result, it is important that Christians learn the Ten Commandments, the principles they reflect, and how they apply to every situation in life. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no God before me. Why is the first commandment so important? The first commandment presents God as the sovereign, sovereign creator and ruler of his creation. He would not allow the worship and honor due to him to be given to others because it would only result in misdirection of life's purpose, frustration, emotional and physical pain, and ultimate death. To those who worship any but him, it therefore deals with what we worship most of the time, the God who gets between the true God and us in the, in the self. We are to worship the Creator, the author of a way of life that will produce right re relationships. This commandment demands that we make Him the source of our values and practices. As we saw last week with the Sixth Commandment, Thou shalt not murder had a few meanings aside from the literal translation. So let us consider our religion to be a state of mind. By accepting the First Commandment to be true, we enter into a state of, that state of mind. Only in this state are we able to, fulfill, to fully adhere to the following Nine Commandments. In a way, the First Commandment is God's way of making sure that everybody clearly understands the responsibilities set by the Commandments as well as the consequences that come from not following them. The first commandment is a reminder so that we do not forget that the commandments are something more than guidelines. Let us not forget that the covenant between us and God has two sides to it. We are God's chosen people. As long as God is our only God, if we do not choose God, we are not his people. But we would happen if we had not accepted God as the eternal. The quantum theory explodes the idea that matter and reality only exist when observed. For instance, does a, for instance, does a spider in your bathroom exist if you do not see it? But the bigger question is, if we did not believe in God, would God still exist? And without the belief in God, what are the Ten Commandments, if not only a set of meaningless, obsolete guidelines? In the book of Matthew, Jesus summed up the Ten Commandments, Matthew 23, 37-40. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love thy Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law of the prophets. When Jesus quoted these two commandments, he was not giving a new law to replace the Ten Commandments of God. He was in fact quoting an Old Testament scripture of, on the importance of keeping the Ten Commandments. Deuteronomy 6, 5 through 8 says, And thou shalt love thy Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and thy shalt be as frontlets between thine eyes. Jesus continually reinforced the sentiment that the Ten Commandments were a law of love. The first, and the first four commandments show us how to love God, and the last six show us how to love people. This is why he said, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Loving God and loving people is what the Ten Commandments are all about. Another verse that reveals more about the nature of the Ten Commandments is John 15:10. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. Paul also showed how the law should be viewed as being about love. He wrote in Romans 13.8, Owe no man anything 
but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. So in closing, it is easy to think that believing in God and having no idols is enough. But God wants his children completely in every part of their day and life. If Christians are not completely focused on him, they are in danger of worshiping worship, 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 whatever has taken his place as the focus in their life. If Christians always find their space, their spare moments filled with thoughts of another person or activity, one that is not concerned with God, there is a possibility that they have created an idol for themselves. Not only do the Ten Commandments express to us the love of God, they also reveal to, reveal to us many of the attributes of the character of God. This is seen in numerous places. In the Word of God, where the same words are used to describe the nature of God and the nature of the law. And with our benediction, Pastor Jessica. <coughs> God goes by many names. In Exodus, we told Moses, I am who I am. And later in Exodus, if three, we see the name Jehovah. Well, either name, he's still the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, first and the last. He should not have any other gods before him. He, he is our Father. The only God who made that commandment so you're not much dread by things that can or would take his place. Don't let other things take God's place in your heart. Believe in him. And you all have the strength to do anything. Thank you. Amen.